In this video, I will show how a microbit can be used to control both rotation and speed of a regular motor. First, we look at a program that can make the microbit measure voltage. The values that can be read by P0 are between 0 and 1023. In the program, the reading is converted to numbers between 0 and 3 volts, rounded to 1 decimal. Now we will use the microbit to study a topic called voltage sharing. We start with two series connected resistors of 2.2 kilo ohms, which are connected to ground and plus 3 volts on the microbit. P0 measures the voltage across the lower resistor. As you can see, the value here is half of 3 volts, which is 1.5 volts. The other 1.5 volts are across the other resistor. As the resistors are of the same size, they divide the 3 volts between them. Now we replace the lower resistor with one of 3.3 kilo ohms and again measure the voltage across it. Now there are 1.8 volts across the lower resistor, while the remaining 1.2 volts are across the upper resistor. 2.2 kilo ohms relate to 3.3 kilo ohms as 2 to 3, so the total 3 volts are divided in the same ratio, namely as 1.2 to 1.8. The greater part of the voltage is across the greatest resistance. Now we replace the lower resistor with a transistor. It has three legs, collector, emitter and base. Initially, its base is not connected to plus 3 volts, so the transistor blocks. It has a very large resistance. Therefore, the entire voltage of 3 volts is across it. We can also say that the collector is high. When the base is connected to the positive pole, the transistor conducts. It has almost no resistance, so there are 0 volts across it. One can say that when base is high, collector is low. We will now study how we can make a motor rotate one way or another. Here is a so-called eight bridge with a motor in the middle and four switches. If we press switch 1 and switch 2, the current runs from left to right through the motor. If we press the other two switches, the current runs in the opposite direction and the motor rotates the other way. Instead of the switches, we now insert four transistors. The lower two, T3 and T4, are of the NPN type and they conduct if their base becomes 0.6 volts more positive than the emitter. The emitter is the one with the arrow. The upper transistors T1 and T2 are of the PNP type and they conduct when the base receives a voltage of 0.6 volts lower than the emitter. Now we make the base of T4 high. When it conducts, its collector becomes low, which also causes T1 to conduct. So now the current runs to the right. If we make the base of T3 high, the opposite happens. The current runs to the left and the motor rotates the other way. The diagram looks like this. And this is what it looks like on a board. The transistors at the top will be mounted later. 
By making P1 or P2 high, you can make the motor change rotation. Now we want a microbit to control the motor. Therefore, I have made this program, which by pressing button A can make P1 and P2 alternate high and low. Here the board is connected to P1 and P2, as well as to ground and 3 volts on the microbit. Next task is to control the motor speed. Therefore, we mount the upper transistor stage and make an extension to the program. Now a press on button B will make the voltage on P0 vary between 0 volts and 3 volts. The current voltage is displayed on the microbit. Here I have used an external power supply for the board and connected 0 volts to ground on the microbit. If you have new batteries in your microbit, it can power the entire setup. 